Hey y'all, it's Stacy. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're making pineapple cheese casserole. Now, if you ask my wife, this is one of those dishes that is absolutely required to be on the Thanksgiving table. It's also really popular um, at Easter because it's a great side dish and complement to a, a ham. But it's just one of those weird dishes that I'm not even really sure how it got started. But even the people who think they're gonna hate this, they end up tasting it and liking it. It's this weird combination of sweet and savory. Like I said, we really love it at our house, but it's really easy to make. Let me show you how to do that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start with two cans of pineapple. Now, uh, you can use pineapple chunks, you can use pineapple tidbits. In a pinch, I've even used crushed pineapple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drain that though, but we're gonna save the juice because we're gonna use that juice to make part of our sauce. So I'm straining just with a mesh strainer here right into a measuring cup so that I can save that juice. Today, I've got two cans of pineapple tidbits. Um, if you like texture, you could do a can of the chunks and a can of the tidbits. Like I've said, in a pinch, I've even used crushed pineapple before. I'm just gonna put this in a bowl so that we can hang on to that pineapple juice. Now, once we've got that drained, in my bowl here, I've got six tablespoons of flour. This is just plain all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add a cup of granulated sugar. And then I'm going to add six tablespoons of this reserved pineapple juice. All right, then we're just gonna whisk this together. And this is the base of our sauce here for our casserole. Once we've got that all combined, we're gonna add our pineapple back to our mix here. And then just gently fold this together. I've got a two quart baking dish that I'm gonna spray with a little non-stick cooking spray. And one thing that you can always do with this too is if you get overspray on your dish, use some paper towels just to wipe off the edge because it's so much easier to wipe this overspray off now rather than once it's baked on and you have to scrub it off. All right, this is gonna go in our baking dish here. It's gonna spread this out. I've got a an eight ounce bag or two cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese that's just gonna go right on the top. Kind of spread that out just a little bit. And now for our topping. I've got a quarter of a cup of unsalted butter here that I've melted and I've got a sleeve of butter crackers like Ritz crackers. I'm just gonna crush these right here in the sleeve. This is about 30 crackers. And this is gonna make our topping for our casserole. Open that up and we're gonna put it right into our butter here. And I don't like these crushed super fine. I like to leave a little texture. I'm gonna stir this together. We just wanna get these cracker crumbs coated in the butter. That way they'll toast up even better. Then this is just gonna get sprinkled right over the top of our casserole. This is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. The thing to keep in mind with this is that it's gonna get nice and bubbly, but it's important that once it's baked, you're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes because the sauce is gonna thicken up nicely during that rest time. All right, so our casserole is finished. It baked for about 30 minutes. And you can see just how beautifully those cracker crumbs toasted up after we coated them in the butter. Again, it's super important that you let this rest for about 10 minutes. If you were to scoop it out right now, that sauce is gonna be a little liquidy, but by letting it rest, it's gonna thicken up and really hold together like the casserole that it needs to be. 